previously on Kitchen Princess Academy. Sora died because he's a bitch and everyone blames Najika. Daichi agrees to be a slave for his dad and replace Sora as student body president, so she's able to stay at the academy. Seiya Mizuno, a mean rich boy who just happens to look exactly like Sora, shows up to replace Najika as the spokesperson for the academy. He also is possibly Najika's planned prince because he was a child in Hokkaido at the same time that she was. Akane finally confesses her feelings to Daichi and gets friend zone, but now she has closure and can be Najika's friend, free of resentment. Najika is invited to prepare a high tea for an event at the academy. Surprise! This is yet another baking contest against Seiya. Grandma calls and tells Najika that the lavender house, the orphanage where she grew up, is being shut down. Turns out the director is the one who bought the lavender house. He gives Najika an ultimatum. He won't shut it down if she loses the contest on purpose. And that's what you missed on Kitchen, Kitchen Princess Academy! Academy. We're back! Thank you all so much for your patience. No more stalling, class is in session, let's get into book eight. So yeah, the director drops this bomb on Najika that she needs to throw this high tea contest on purpose or else the entire orphanage will be shut down and all of the orphans will just be displaced, I guess. This must be kept confidential especially from Daichi. I don't want him to be manipulated by you and end up like Sora. Okay, newsflash asshole, Najika's manipulation wasn't driving the truck that flattened your son. I was. So Najika is in complete shock as she leaves this meeting. She's just horrified and she's immediately met with her painfully oblivious friends trying to support her. Famous chefs are gonna be at the event, right? This is your chance to get even closer to fulfilling your dream. Just be yourself and make what you always make. It'll come out great. I mean, just look at all the recipes you came up with. Oh yeah, and Najika's plans and recipes and everything for the high tea is written on one single piece of paper. I'm sure nothing's gonna happen to that. Najika is spiraling at the conundrum she's in. In order to save the Lavender House and the only family she's ever had, she's gonna have to go against her one goal in life, which is to use food to make people happy. The one thing that she has that still connects her to her dead parents is her love of cooking. She is completely consumed by the thought of the family she lost and the family she's about to lose. Daichi, observant as ever, is like, hmm, Najika seems upset about something. <laughs> Dad, I'm here. Dad? Hmm, dad's not here. I guess he's on his business trip still. Man, let's see here, uh, books, books, books. Huh? Hokkaido plans? This, the Lavender, the Lavender House, House will be owned, will be by, owned the by the Mizuno Corporation, Corporation after, after this. this. Could he have? Okay, I know I rag on the director a lot, but is he like stupid as hell? He made such a big fucking deal to Najika about how his evil scheme has to be confidential to everyone, but especially to Daichi. You know, Daichi, the student body president Bruh. who has full access to the director's office. And then he fucks off somewhere for a business trip and leaves his book of evil schemes labeled on his shelf. Talking about keep this confidential. Bitch, why not just tweet it at this point? Hmm? Post it on Facebook. Text it to Daichi directly. Getting back to Najika, we see that she has made her decision. She's gonna take the director's deal to save the Lavender House. Side note, as we see Najika weighing her options and thinking about how she, how she would lose a competition, she's like, would that mean like being sloppy with my work or adding too much salt or anything? This bitch is so good at what she does, she doesn't know how to lose a baking contest. That's why she's the kitchen princess. She dramatically throws the one piece of paper with all of her recipes, all of her plans for the high tea into this gigantic incinerator behind the school. I made the right decision, didn't I? Najika! Huh? Daichi? What are you doing? These are important notes. Did dad say something to you? He did, didn't he? I saw his documents regarding the lavender house. He's up to something for sure. Wait up to something? So you mean Daichi still hasn't figured out what his dad's scheme is? Bruh. Even after reading the documents, outlining the scheme? Bruh. Damn, no wonder the director was so comfortable leaving his villainous plot books out in the open. As long as someone doesn't sit Daichi down and directly step by step explain to him what's going on, right over his head. No absorption at all. Najika is desperate to keep up the facade that she's doing this of her own free will. And so she gives the most sad and unsettling excuse I've ever fucking heard. Well, I'm not a special student anymore. So I, I just thought if I wanted to focus on something other than cooking, I think I'm getting tired of it really. Like if I quit the Fujita Diner, I could play after school or I might want to go to a movie 
or take a neoprint. You could come with me. But Daichi sees right through this, and without a second of hesitation, he reaches into the goddamn incinerator to grab Najika's recipes. Daichi, stop it, you'll burn yourself. That's not even a believable lie, Najika. Your parents gave you a dream to become a great cook. That's what you live for. You can't give it up. That's right, I can't give it up. That's my only dream. I'm, I'm sorry, Daichi. What am I supposed to do? All I wanna do is protect what's important to me. Sayasama, are you preparing for the high tea? Mmm. The main guest of a high tea is the tea. Mmm. And this spectacular aroma is very refined indeed. So, I guess it's decided. I'll use this vintage Darjeeling tea and serve it with ham and cheese and smoked salmon sandwiches. They'll all be simple, one ingredient each, and I- what? What is this? You can't come in without knocking. Hey, Mr. Student Body President. What's wrong? Did Najika-chan ask you to come and spy? Uh-huh. I have... I have a favor to ask. All right, no more stalling. The big day has arrived. It's time for tea. As usual, the goon squad is there to support Najika. Akane and Fujita are stunned at all the important people who are attending. And judging. Akane... <laughs> Akane's oblivious ass is trying to cheer up Najika and she ends up making it like a thousand times worse. Najika, did you see them? Everyone's here for your high tea. It's an honor to have them eat what you make. My mom is here. She even skipped breakfast for today. She heard your food was that good. We'll be over here. Yeah, do your best. I'm going to betray everyone with my cooking. And then of course the director busts in like, hey! Chop, chop, why aren't we cooking? What the fuck? Wipe that frown off your face. Remember the deal. You don't have to keep that promise. Huh? Sora, what are you doing here? Here, it's the deed to the lavender house. I got it back from dad. The lavender house is here to stay, so cook with all you got. That's right, of all fucking people, Saya is the one who swoops in to save the day. He even tells Najika that she can use any of his ingredients, his expensive ingredients, because she was so set on losing, she didn't bring anything. Proving that once again, he is a fucking thousand times better than Sora. Can you imagine if Sora was still here when the director was threatening to shut down the orphanage? He'd be like, I'm so sorry about this, Najika. Man, my dad's the worst. <laughs> I especially love this plot point because up until this point, the director's kind of been this ultimate unstoppable force villain because all of our characters are children and he's so much older and more powerful and he has so much money. But then Seiya's like, wait a second, my dad's rich. I can do anything I want. You know your childhood orphanage? I bought it. Here, take it. It means nothing to me. Okay, I won't give Seiya too much credit. He's not like doing this out of the kindness of his heart, you know? He's doing this to hurt the director. Seiya is furious that the director thinks that he can't win a baking competition unless Najika is losing on purpose. And so he's deliberately evening the playing field as much as possible to prove that he is simply the better chef. My man bought an orphanage for his ego. He's amazing. What? All right, director, I'll compete with her fair and square. I can win without your cheap tricks. <sighs> You'll regret this. If you lose, I have something in mind for you too. <laughs> Try me. The director is being real bold. Me personally, if I were the director, I wouldn't be making threats right now. I'd be scared shitless. The last thing, the last thing this man needs is another teenager becoming his enemy. And this one, apparently he can't even go band for band with. Mizuno can, um, about this, I- You can thank your student buddy president. He begged me to help him. <laughs> How pathetic. I would never do that. You have a big mouth. d d d d d d here, bitch! And he has a special surprise guest. Promo's in the house! Daichi had grandma flewed out as a guest for this high tea because he knows that no matter how discouraged and beaten down Najika is, because as long as she's cooking for a person that she loves, she is not capable of making bad food. Uh, yes! <laughs> Once again, through the power of friendship, Najika has her head in the game and her heart in the song. No more stalling, no more fucking around. 
it's time for high tea. So the way the high tea as a competition works is that Seiya and Najika are kind of taking turns. First, Seiya serves his tea, and then Najika serves his tea. Seiya serves sandwiches, then Najika serves sandwiches. Both of them are supposed to have a theme for their high tea that they are communicating through uh, the presentation and the recipes themselves. All right, no more fucking around. It's time for round one, tea. My theme is a traditional, historic, royal high tea. Seiya opens with vintage Darjeeling tea and scones, both plain and with nuts. <laughs> Seiya, of course, is using the same strategy he always uses. Simple, but with expensive ingredients. And of course, the judges are like blowing their load over it. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Now it's Najika's turn. For me, high tea is a moment of fun. So I prepare different types of tea to keep the conversation moving. Now I can hear you asking, wait, I thought you said Najika didn't prepare anything. How does she have tea prepared? Um, to which I reply, shut up. Uh, Shut the fuck up. Don't ever fucking question me about Kitchen Princess again, damn. Najika's scones are delicious, of course, and she notes that they are made with rice flour instead of regular flour, so even people who are allergic to wheat can enjoy them. She's so fucking cute. Oh, and by the way, the entire time throughout each round of this competition, the director is making like snide comments and criticisms to the judges about Najika's cooking. Get a fucking life. Round two, sandwiches. Seiya brings out his sandwiches, they're expensive and organic, blah blah blah, everyone loves them. Well, it's time for Najika's sandwiches, and she comes out with, <laughs> with, with a whole fucking loaf of bread! Girl, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, oh, okay. So there are actual sandwiches inside the loaf of bread. <clears throat> um, sorry, I, I was stressed. Round three, cakes! What a surprise, Seiya's cakes are beautiful and perfect, and he even made little bouquets of, of sugar candy for each cake. Next are your cakes. Hurry, don't make the guests wait. Um, uh, yes, uh, please enjoy. This is, uh, quite simple. Najika's cakes are small and simple and plain, and she has incorporated produce into each of them. Huh? How did you know it was my birthday? You're my daughter Akane's friend, aren't you? Did she tell you? Oh, actually, I just heard everyone talking about it earlier. So you put this message on right now? Yes, I haven't had a surprise like this in a long time. I'm so happy. That's right, baby, Najika's back with her old tricks. And Akane's mom isn't the only one who got a surprise. Najika personalized every single plate that went out to each guest of the high tea. Like she heard one guy say that he recently got a spotted cat and so she drew a cat on his plate. Remember how they went on and on about how there are so many high profile celebrity chefs at this high tea? Well, one of their plates has three stars on it because it's been their lifelong dream to own a three star restaurant. The people are raving. They love the personalization. They love the amount of care and effort she took and they love the way the cakes taste too. She made sure every person was already smiling before they even tasted her food. Sora? Oh, you want a big finish? I'll give you a big finish. Today, the guests include my classmates' parents and other people of their generation. That is my theme, a high tea for your parents. It's our dearest wish that our parents are healthy and live long. I wanted my high tea to express that. That's why you use vegetables and other healthy ingredients. So you'll eat it and be healthy. This is the best high tea. Every aspect of Njika's high tea was simple and clumsy and heartfelt, just like the kinds of gifts that a child would give to their parents. Najika's cooking invoked the feeling of a clumsy handmade Mother's Day gift. Not perfect, not professional, but more special than anything money could buy. It invokes the smell and taste of flowers pulled from your own garden because your child knows that it's your favorite. It invokes the feeling of a 10 second scribbled note from your parents telling you to have a good day at school. Comparing Seiya's high tea to Najika's is like comparing professional five-star cooking to your mother's family recipes. There's, there's just no contest. Najika's theme was a high tea for your parents and she filled every inch of it with all the love that she never got the chance to give to her own parents. <laughs> oh my God. Haha, <laughs> 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 funny YouTuber pretends to cry for dramatic effect. No bitch. <laughs> actually start crying thinking about Kitchen Princess again. I love, <laughs> I love this series more than anything in the world. I don't care how badly written it is. I don't care about anything. It has made me happy for over 10 years. Oh my God. The judges are blown away and the director is panicking. But, but you cannot call this a traditional high tea. 
She went for gimmicks because she wasn't confident in her skills. You cannot compare this to Mizuno-kun's cooking. But none of that matters because the judges have already made up their mind. The winner is... Both of them. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Yep. The judges went for the shittiest option ever of both of you are so talented, we just couldn't choose. Fuck you. And I know it's not unheard of in these competition sagas to have a contest end with everyone's a winner, especially when the competitors are literal fucking children. But this is Kitchen Princess, okay? Like, are you new here? Are you actually fucking new here? The consequences for losing past baking contests have ranged from uh, getting expelled to restaurants being shut down to like being sold into fucking slavery. The director is of course pissed, but he doesn't want to make a scene, so he just storms off. In my opinion, the true victim here is Seiya. He bought an entire orphanage to prove that he could win without cheating, and then he didn't fucking win. Bruh. Speaking of Seiya, Mizuno Khan, your cake was delicious. Really, everything was just great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, hey, Kazami-san, your cake was delicious. Yeah, I was excited just thinking about what was coming next. It was next. really your fun. Your bread loaf sandwich container would have been I would love to have your recipe top. for oranges. Please, Memphis. and give me the recipe to your shortbread too. I would love to eat your food again. I knew your parents well, and they would be really proud of you. What the heck? They only said one thing to me. This doesn't feel like a tie. It feels... Like I lost. Seiya's internal Joker monologue is interrupted by Grandma coming up to him to personally thank him for saving her and the orphans of the Lavender House. And so naturally he responds by bitching her out. <laughs> it's not fair. Her parents were genius pastry chefs. She didn't work for that. I worked so hard to get here. Grandma gently talks Seiya down by reminding him that yes, Najika is naturally gifted, but she also had to work to become as good as she is now. She also had to go through making mistakes and fucking recipes up in order to learn what works best. You know that though, don't you? You were watching her from the Lavender House window ever since you were small. What? <laughs> Clocked! You've grown so much since then. I don't care! Of course this conversation has to end with Seiya slapping the fuck out of Grandma's hand as she's trying to be nice to him. Seiya storms off and continues his internal monologue, talking about the fact that Nothing has changed since he was a child. Even now, he's still on the outside looking in. The night ends with Grandma having a sleepover in Najika's little loft above the Fujita Diner and them talking about everything. About food and the director and the orphanage and love. And Grandma tells her that Flan Prince or no, Najika will find someone who will stand by her side and give her courage. A few days go by and this baking contest and the orphanage finally being safe has really brought Najika back to her old self. We're treated to a rare carefree scene where the kids are actually acting like kids. Najika's talking about how she's gonna eat so much food. Daichi and her are teasing each other. Najika thanks Daichi for everything that he did and he tells her that she doesn't owe him anything. Just follow your dreams, okay? Najika? Uh. Did Najika just finally realize that Daichi's hot? Life goes back to normal for almost everyone. <laughs> Except Seiya. He is still fuming about the high tea situation and about the fact that everyone can't stop raving about how nice Najika is. Bro has got to put a stop to this and now. Meanwhile, at the Fujita Diner again, business is booming and Fujita and Najika are completely overwhelmed. Daichi volunteers to step in and help as a server and it's so obvious that Najika is really seeing him in a different way. I, okay, so it's true. She is just now realizing that he's hot. Girl, we are on book eight. He took his shirt off in book one. You're just now, oh my God. As Najika is back in the kitchen, lost in her own world, pondering these feelings that she's feeling, Daichi busts in and is like, hey Najika, emergency, we need you out here now. Turns out one of the servers at the Fujita Diner is being incredibly rude to the customers. And I can hear you asking, what other servers are at the Fujita Diner? Well, have I got a treat for you. You're done eating, right? Then move, you're in my way. Hey, hey, what are you doing here? I decided to help out for a while. This son of a bitch, Seiya hired himself at the Fujita Diner, and he openly tells Najika the reason he's doing this is to spy on her. He can't stand the fact that he keeps losing to Najika, even though he is more skilled and highly trained and all that shit. He's straight up like, until I get to the bottom of why you're so nice to everyone, I'm gonna be on your ass. You're so busy you need help, right? So it's good for you too. Next order is a cream croquettes? That's easy. Hold it. 
I can't let an assistant make food on their first day. You can do the dishes. What? Who do you think I am? If you don't like it, go back to your own kitchen. Mm, fine, I'm never leaving. So yeah, out of pure spite and hatred for Najika, Seiya not only bought and saved her childhood orphanage, but he is now working a service industry job. <laughs> this guy, his evil schemes, I mean, his energy is right, but his thought process is not there yet. Now, despite having dastardly motives for working at the Fujita Diner and spying on Najika, Seiya does start to learn a lot. Excuse me, can I have some water? What the fuck? <laughs> I'll get that for you right away. I serve the water depending on the temperature that day. Today, it's a little chilly, so no ice. And everyone's tired from classes, so I put in a few drops of lemon. You go through that much hassle for water? I want them to enjoy the water, too. Serving delicious food in its most delicious state. Cooking is as simple as that. Against all odds, Seiya manages to stay employed at the Fujita Diner without quitting or having a meltdown for two weeks. And as a reward, Najika asks Fujita for a favor. <gasps> I can make today's dessert? Seriously? I can make it? Yeah, Najika begged me. <laughs> I guess I'll have to make something great to blow the guests away. Hey, you only have cheap ingredients? I can't have high-end ingredients at a school cafeteria. Use what we have. After being given special treatment for his entire life, it's being treated like an average person that gives Seiya a new appreciation for cooking. Making food for other people is not something that he's entitled to. He has to earn it. Once again, Seiya manages to work through these limitations and he's able to make a delicious apple tart from the cheap ingredients they have. But now comes the real test, serving his food to a customer. It's delicious. <gasps> really? Yeah, it's really good. Ooh, I smell apples. Can I have the same thing? It's nice and cheap. I'd like to have one too. This is so good. I want seconds. <laughs> I like that texture. Excuse me, are you making the dessert tomorrow too? Huh? Yeah. Cool, then we'll come back tomorrow. Looking forward to it. <gasps> what? What is this? It's really fun. He's got it. He's finally fucking got it. Seeing firsthand the happiness that his food is giving these people, the happiness is contagious and it finally gets through to him. We get another kind of cute scene of Seiya and Najika staying after hours at the Fujita Diner and they're just talking. Again, I've talked before about how much these two characters have in common, how they're the perfect foils for each other. And so I really like seeing them interact. Also, it looks like Seiya might be developing feelings for Najika. Even when he's like feeling love, he's still so sinister about it. I fucking love this guy. Najika Kazami and Seiya Mizuno, huh? <laughs> That's a good match. I'm telling you, you need to choose your friends carefully. That was part of your promise. Your promise. promise. Your promise. promise. Morning. Mizuno-kun, what are you doing here? I made this for you. Baki? Do you know what Baki means? Huh? It's Italian for kisses. <gasps> you should go out with me. <gasps> End of book eight. What the fuck just happened? All right, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to leave you guys here. I'll come up with the next one as soon as possible. We'll get into book nine. Hell fucking yeah, dude. As always, thank you for your patience. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to, don't if you don't, and I'll see you next whenever I upload. Bye. <laughs> as usual with, as usual with Njika's, as usual with,